Now let's bring in Ed Wallace, Good Day Car Critic, host of Wheels with Ed Wallace on KLIF, columnist for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, Ed knows business and cars, so let's talk about the business side of this, Ed. The tax breaks for the company are important, but the impact on the employees matters to corporations too, so I assume Plano won out on, on like things like affordability and quality of life? Well, it's one of the things the car company's been doing for some time, Steve, leaving California. Nissan went to Nashville for the same reason. Honda has sent a bunch of their senior engineers up near their factory in Ohio. And a big one that changed a few years ago, Boeing left Seattle to go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. One of the things about coming to our region is housing is more affordable. According to Zwillow, the average home is 255000 in Plano, and it's just 550000 in Torrance, California. But you get twice the size house here with more amenities for that kind of money. Ultimately, for a business viewpoint, if you are national in scope, the downside to being in California is by the time you get to work in the morning, your dealers on the East Coast, half their work day is already gone. And I think that's why Nissan moved to Tennessee, Honda's moving a lot of people to Ohio, because here you can be more productive in an eight-hour day. And that's big to any car company the size of Toyota. I see. Uh, primary car building factories for Toyota in the United States, Kentucky, Mississippi, and San Antonio. Plano's a lot closer to those three locations in Torrance, California. That, that factor in, you think? Yeah, I'm not so sure that it does. Keep in mind that we're bringing 1,000 people out of the engineering staff in Kentucky down here to Dallas. That was the biggest surprise to me that today, is that they're going to have the engineers right next to sales and marketing yeah. when one would think the logic of it would be to keep them near the factory where they're needed most often. Uh, you, you've seen this kind of thing. Let me ask you, they're thinking that there's going to be 4,000 jobs consolidated here. I assume everybody who used to work in Torrance and other places will be offered to come down here and work. How many people usually come? If there's 4,000 jobs, how many open jobs might North Texans have a shot at, do you think? Well, Steve, I think 3,000 are coming from Torrance. 2,300 will stay out in California, mostly with the design studios. But if Toyota is any indication, when Nissan left California for Nashville, only about 42% of their workforce agreed to go. So there could end up being some hiring done here in Texas if Toyota comes down with the same type of statistics. And these will be primary, you said engineering jobs, also primary executive type jobs? Well, that's the idea. This is going to be their headquarters for sales and marketing, and obviously one of the things you're going to see is all the Toyotas getting gear around here. They're doing well now, but with the big bosses up in the north neck of the woods looking at them, mark my words, the Toyota dealer is going to want to sell more cars, and the Honda dealers are going to be a bit more scared. Have, have, uh, you mentioned Nissan moving from California, Gardena, California, to, to Tennessee. That was 2008, so we've had some time to see how that worked, if that worked. You've probably kept an eye on that. How has that worked? Well, I deal with the same people with Nissan today I did when they were out in California, except now they don't answer your emails quite as fast. They still get back to you, and when you talk to them on the phone, they're a whole lot more relaxed than they were when they were out in California. <laughs> Again, I think a lot of this is productivity. Huh. Toyota wants people to come to work, and they want to work eight hours a day. And when you come to the central time zone, it helps you on the West Coast, and it helps you on the East Coast. Right. Detroit should come to Dallas and lived in a city where not everybody drives their cars. Yeah, we'll see if that, that's down the road somewhere. Ed, uh, I read a New York Times article where they interviewed a Toyota um, dealership owner and it just said this is just an example of how terrible the business climate is in California. True, I mean we know the governor was out there recruiting and he says he's got 50 more California companies lined up to come out here. I is it that bad in California? No, the California car market last year grew substantially. In fact, they had a record year for car sales last year. Unlike Texas where we came back in 2010, we were back where we were before the financial meltdown. California took until last year to play catch-up, and they're having a better year now, although it's slowing down. The issue with California is it's really over-dealered, and while they have some great dealers, famous dealers out there, I don't think they have the quality of dealers that we have in Texas. That's going to be a boost for Toyota to meet their dealers here face-to-face -face on a regular basis. All right, it'll be, it'll, it'll be interesting to watch 2017, or late 2016, early 2017, by the time it's all totally operational in Plano. Ed Wallace, thanks for the insight. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. All right. We appreciate uh, Ed Wallace. Remember, he has a radio show every Saturday.
8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Talks about cars, the automotive uh, section, and the, the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, too. Make sure you catch up with Ed Wallace. Wheels with Ed Wallace.